Good morning. Welcome to Good Morning Success with Dawn Nicole and Good Mario. And what you are experiencing is inspiration for the driven. That's exactly what Good Morning Success is, is daily inspiration for the driven. So we are going to sip on our tea and give you guys um, a couple of moments to join us. Some of you are entrepreneurs. Some of you who join us are college students. And some of you are hardworking career professionals. And we love you all. Um, so as you guys are getting things uh, together, you're probably either on your drive to work, you're probably brushing your teeth, making your morning cup of coffee, and we've got our tea. Baby, let's cheers with our tea. Woo. Now, real quick, tell the viewers, why are we drinking tea and not coffee? What's, what's the deal? We're well, trying to cut back on the coffee. But why are we cutting back, babe? Because we used to be avid coffee yeah, drinkers, right? I, I just, coffee is an addiction. Mm -hmm. It's bad. But I was going to say something about caffeine, but, but tea, tea has, has caffeine, caffeine in it, too. too. That wasn't a good one. Though. Yeah, but here's what's crazy. When we started building the What's Your Secret Sauce and going hard around like January, February, we were like avid coffee drinkers. We would do coffee in the morning. Good morning, David Frankel, the owner and creator of Perky Collar. David, we love Perky Collar. Real quick, I got to give you a shout out. If you are a man out there and you are a professional and you care at all about how you show up and how your collar looks when you show up, you want to be stellar, then you absolutely have got to get you a Perky Collar. All right, Perky Collar leads to Perky results, right, David? <laughs> I knew David was going to do that. So, David, thank you for the love. This is a good morning success. We do this every single morning. It's inspiration for the driven. But really quick, back to the coffee. We were avid coffee drinkers, and we were kind of, as you call it, babe, the woodshed, right? We were, we were working. Working in, in the woodshed. In the woodshed, sun up to sun down between the months of January and February, and we survived off of coffee, and we gained so much weight. Or... At least I'll speak for myself. I gained so much weight and I remember looking up at you wondering, what happened? It's not like I've been eating crazy, but I had been drinking crazy, crazy amounts of coffee. So anyway, so welcome to Good Morning Success. Um, the first thing that we always do is we talk about what's on the agenda today. What do we have our sights set on? Um, babe, I'll let you go ahead and give us a roll call on what we're doing. And while we're doing that, please type in the comments below, what do you have on your agenda? What goals, what initiatives, what do you want out of today? So, babe, hit it. What we got on our agenda? Uh, 10 o'clock. Don't name a name, but, you know. Okay, I'll just, well, you know, I'm just saying. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead, honey, I'm sorry. 10 o'clock conference call with a new potential client about on, on some digital marketing website um, revision type stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and David says some money. I know that's it's right. Always about money. Always, David. We got on green. <laughs> hey, money green. <laughs> green. No, but David is saying on his agenda, it's about making some money, right, David? You're making some money. You remember, David? Well, I was, you know, I was. Kind of joining in the circle yeah, with yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, like, okay, yeah. Okay, honey, go ahead. And um, we, we're doing some client things today, you know. Fulfillment. So, so therefore, you got to, it's not only you have to go after business, you have to take time to work inside the business. Ooh. And we're probably finishing up some more proposals. All right, I love how you say that. So if you want to order the way he just said proposals, it's 1-800. Proposals. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> No, but can I talk about something you just said real quick? When I started in business, and, I, and some of us fall into this, this trap, I was so adamant about meeting the next lead, meeting the people, meeting the people, that what would happen is I was having conversion. So I was taking customers, um, I'm sorry, I was taking prospects to the state of being customers, but I was better at being out there, right? Being the face of the business and, and getting them to come on board. But I wasn't great at sitting down long enough to fulfill the order, the fulfillment part. And um, I remember when you and I first connected, you call yourself doing like an analysis on me. And the analysis was so interesting because he was like, listen, you're always running to all these events. You are like Miss It, Miss Popular, but are you profitable? And are your clients happy with you, right? That's the big thing is, are they happy? And the reality is that 
some of them probably weren't happy because I had done a better job of, of selling the service, if you will, than probably fulfilling like I needed to because I was running in 10,000 different directions. So you make a very, very good point that if you constantly stay in hunt mode and go mode and you don't stop long enough to really understand your current client needs and fulfill those orders, you won't even have a client base. The reality is that much of your business will come through referrals. So if you do a great job servicing the clients that you do have, you won't have to constantly stay on the chase and on the hunt because you will get that referral business, correct? Exactly. So I love what you said, but I wanna I wanna pinpoint something else too that we're doing that's different. Um, sometimes you guys who can hear my voice, people will ask us, okay, what are you guys doing to be successful? How are you guys managing this roller coaster called entrepreneurship? And and I will tell you this, um, there used to be a time where I thought every single spot on the calendar needed to be filled up. In fact, if somebody casually wanted to meet with me, I would say, no, my calendar represents my money, my time is my money. But that was really the wrong concept to have. Ooh, and some of you are like, what? Break that down. So I'm gonna break it down. When you work a job and you work in corporate, we are taught to trade time for money. Meaning you go in, they offer you an hourly rate, you work that amount of hours, you make that amount of money. When you come over to this side and you become an entrepreneur, a business owner, you really have to have a different mentality. You can't attribute your time with your money. You have to start thinking, how can I duplicate me and make money while I sleep? Oh, I wish the shaker was available, honey. The reality is you want to make money in your sleep. You can no longer afford to think about your time as one hour means this, one hour means that. In fact, my proposals are not even hourly. My proposals are based on amount of people. They are based on uh, materials, time to prepare. They're based on research and expertise. They're not based on hourly because I feel that you can't afford me hourly, right? My time is so invaluable. So one of the things that I teach entrepreneurs to do is to create a set it and forget it system, something that makes money in their sleep, some sort of a training program. For you, Perky Collar, David, um, one of the things that I would do for you, and you probably have this, my friend, we hadn't caught up in a while, but some sort of etiquette training around the gentleman's etiquette training around how to best position yourself, and I'd have it based on events. This is the job interview. Uh, so even though Perky Collar is the product, hey, Jody, good morning. Welcome to Good Morning Success. So David, although Perky Collar is the product, there should be a service that goes along with it and the service should be something that I can pick up online. You might already have this, my friend, because you are totally intel intelligent, but um, I would totally pair a service with that product and make that service available even without them getting David. So it's something that's pre-recorded, it's something I can pay for, and it would be by scenario. So one would be a fine dining, perky collar experience, right? Another one might be a job interview or an interview, a, a decision-making meeting. But anyway, David, let's get together offline to talk about how you take a product and pair it with the service. I've done way too much talking for the little bit that you said. So continue. What else do we have planned? I was just thinking this. <laughs> How did she take? She? Okay, okay, oh, okay. Oh my goodness. All right, all right, honey. Just what else? Solutionist. What else <laughs> do we have planned? Okay. <laughs> Ooh, boy, I tell you, I had a great topic for today. Okay, and then and, I, and, I have and, and, you, and this what, is totally unscripted, so what, I never know and, what this guy's gonna say. But okay. if I give you the topic, I know that you would run with. Okay, so go ahead, babe. Go ahead, because they are get okay. This is deep because you're getting up. Oh, okay, be careful. Okay, you got it. All right, here goes. This is this is his conversation. Let's see what's going on. We are going after clients today. You know, talking about proposals. Okay. And the client does not have enough money to mm -hmm. cover the proposal or the statement of work you say you was going to do. Mm -hmm. So instead of you turning down the client. You start subtracting your pay. Oh, okay. To please the client. Okay, thanks for the the visual, honey. Yeah, yeah, there, they, this, they like there's it, nothing it, on this. It's like, <laughs> oh it's like, God, it's not even it's not, on. He's such you a know, great actor. Like, uh, okay, so the point is, the point of this conversation for our listeners is. And, and you know what? I think I get what you're saying because I did a blog. The reality is don't back down. Once you put the proposal out, do not adjust your price. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. Talk to us, babe. Why is that the case? Why should well, they not the adjust case, the price? You shouldn't because usually you know your work, you know your value. Mm -hmm. And we always talk about value versus worth. Value versus worth. Make sure but you look that up. That's at the same thing. time, 
I don't feel like you should cut your intake, your, uh-huh. your profits or what have you, okay. just to appease the client because you can't do that for every client. Absolutely. Well, well oh, no. Well, that's not... Okay, go ahead. Because that's not even the angle. I agree with you, but I feel that you shouldn't do it for a totally different reason. Well, so you know, I, you know, you can probably go on the second guessing yourself or you haven't priced yourself correctly in the first place or however yes, you want to yes. look at it. But what are your views on that? Absolutely. Good morning, Ronnie. Good morning, Jody. Welcome to Good Morning Success. You remember Ronnie? We haven't talked to him since last year, last summer. Ronnie. Ronnie. But listen, this is Good Morning Success, daily inspiration for the driven. Please input in the comments, what are you trying to get accomplished today? Not trying. What will you get accomplished? What is on the agenda today? We um, pump up, inspire, and motivate um, You know your agenda. We talk about suggestions as you embark on this thing. But really quick, DeMario raised a very good point. DeMario talked about backing down on the proposal once you put the price out there. Yes. Last summer, I actually wrote a blog about this. Do you know that if, depending on what type of client you have, if you propose the initial price and then you back down on it, it actually can be a negative that works against you. Let me tell you how, because I had a conversation with someone that I highly respect and he was in the business of franchising. So he was looking, he had retired from corporate America. He had a nest egg of money and he was looking to invest it into a franchise. And one of the things he did is he had done tons of research on these franchises. And when he went to the headquarters to the franchising company, they sold him on their franchising model and the success rate and da 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 da. It was a little bit more pricey than he had liked. So he told the gentleman, well, let me think about it and get back to you and let's continue to talk. Well, within 24 hours, he had received all types of like discounts and offers from this franchising opportunity. And to him, that screamed a red flag. That screamed, mm-hmm. uh, you just devalued yourself. You just made me look at you differently. And in fact, for that reason and that reason alone, I'm going to go to the competitor. Isn't that something? So the the lesson learned there is that had this franchising company stuck to their guns and maintained their price point and did not back down on that proposal, this gentleman simply needed time to step away and he was going to go for that franchising opportunity, but because they backed down on their price, it made him devalue the quality of their service. Remember, perception is everything. Perception can be reality and sometimes it has everything to do with how you price yourself. The moment you start backing down and taking away line items, right? And this is what I'm saying. If you negotiate the price point during the negotiation process, that's one thing. What I'm saying is the moment you hit that submit button and that proposal goes out with those line item numbers and your recipient feels like they can't afford you, don't back down. And this is something that small business owners are very, very eager to do because we feel, and I know I've, I've done this. Give I've me been, the money. Uh, uh, just, yeah. Whatever you got, just give well, it to me. Well, and, and we also have a heart to serve, right? Because we're small businesses and we feel for people and we start doing that empathy thing. And But in reality, let me tell you this. And this empathy is a, will keep your pockets empty. Oh, say it again, honey. <laughs> Empathy, Empathy will, will keep, keep your, your pockets, pockets empty. empty. Oh, you better do yes. The reality is, are you a charity or are you in business? That's the reality. So hopefully when you are preparing your proposals, you've taken the necessary steps to vet it in such a way that once you put it out there in the world, that's what it is. When you back down, people tend to devalue the you know what you offer, the worth of your product. So be careful with that one. Also, I'm going to tell you this. No one who has ever paid full price for anything um, um, takes advantage of the opportunity. Meaning if they pay a $5,000 price point or $10,000 for training or for a service, they're going to take that a lot more seriously than a person who got it for free. Trust me, I'm a living, breathing example and we won't go there. So, Well, you know, a couple of years ago, um, uh-huh. the automotive industry, you know, such companies as GM, um, the car maxes of the world, um, Infinities, they all came out with no haggle pricing. Mm-hmm. You probably heard of that term or see it a lot. What ho- no haggle pricing means, this is the price of the car, this is what you'll pay. Okay. Period. Okay. You, it's no negotiation, it's no going back and oh, forth. Because you know you always have those people who go to the dealership and yes. they're like, I'm the expert that, at that, talking them down. <laughs> that's why they got no haggle pricing right. now. It, it is what it is. They have already calculated, th- okay. they even show you what their profit is. So, you know, I believe that's great as a business model. Yeah. Just, 
Just yeah. put your prices on that. That's what it is. But there's something else that I want to talk about. And I'm going to switch gears for a second. And Ronnie, what do you have on your agenda today? Jody, what's up with you? What's going on today? What are you getting accomplished today? While you guys are taking a moment to kind of respond to that, um, I want to talk about what is support. This is a big one. And just so you guys know, we have all day long to talk about these things that happen. And we discuss every single thing that happens um, as we are interacting and interconnecting with um, our clients and friends and partners alike. So let me ask you, what is support? There are a lot of business owners who feel like support looks like, hey, spend money with me, support. Hey, show up to my event, give me your time, support. Hey, help market me, support, right? Tell someone else about me, support. So I'm going to ask you because that is that gets very, very tricky, especially when you have colleagues with expectations. So let me break this down for a second. There's an influx of businesses who are our counterparts and colleagues who expect a certain level of support. And what's interesting is as long as no one is defining what support looks like, there's opportunity for confusion and miscommunication. So I want to really address that elephant in the room for a second because even myself, I get people all the time that says, all right now, come to my event and come support me, right? Or right now, the ticket price is this, come and support me. And so one of the things that I started thinking about is if you spend your time supporting everyone, what about your agenda? Are you really getting things done? And what I'm saying is there are multiple ways to support people. Support doesn't have to look like uh, one way. There are multiple ways. For example, and let me ask you, this is going to be a great question for you. If I am a, a meat eater and someone just opened up a vegetarian restaurant, right? They serve all vegetarian and I've already deemed that I don't like vegetarian, should I be coming in there to spend money every single week for the sake of support? What's greater, right? My loss or your gain? So when I ask you, when it comes to support, what is expected of me if I am a meat eater and you just opened up a vegan restaurant? Let's talk about it. Hey Terry, good morning. Um, What's on the agenda today? Okay. So yeah, we're talking about there, what is there support. There is no support there. So the support well, is wishing the person well, but okay. you you don't have to uh, go by the business and, and spend money spend on something money, you don't need, and they shouldn't be offended by that. Okay. You know, I I think the support chain goes into what people think you owe them. Ooh, where is the shaker? So you feel that people's version of how you support them has to do with like an entitlement, like they feel owed yeah, something. Yeah, like you, you're going to okay. dictate how I support you. Okay. I can support you by telling all my friends about you. Yes, yes. And that's something that you might not even know I did. Well, and, oh, that is that is so deep because a lot of business owners and, and people in general, uh, they feel that support looks like you need to come and spend money with me or physically show up. And I am a fan of physically showing up if it meets both of our initiatives, right? And let me just be very honest with my thoughts on this. And some of you may or may not agree. And also chime in in the comments when, when people start saying, hey, come by and support me or spend $500 worth of money to support me. Um, support can get you broke. Support can keep you broke. And most importantly, support can keep you distracted. So what has to happen is you must define as the recipient, how can I best support this person? Again, what is greater, right? Your gain or my loss, okay? Meaning I'm not going to just do things arbitrarily. Like it doesn't make sense to me to spend money on sun tanning lotion to get thousands of dollars worth because my little sister is in a sun tanning uh, business, right? And I'm probably never going to use that much sun tanning lotion. Although I did find out that I do need, black people do need sun tanning lotion. I went to the Bahamas and got burnt like a burnt fry. But anyway, um, yes, uh, yes, I totally agree, David. This is where I'm going with this. So let's, let's use this analogy. I'm a black woman. I am probably not going to buy hundreds and thousands of dollars worth of sun tanning lotion just because my sister is in a sun tanning business. However, the question then becomes, if not spending my money for something I can use, how else can I support her? I can tell people about her. I can help create a referral program. I can refer friends that will use it to her. So I'm supporting you when I connect you with people who want to buy your product. I'm supporting you when I promote you on social media. It might not be something I used, but I believe in what you're doing so I can support by telling people about it. There are numerous ways to support people. So 
Um, oh, let's look what David. So David says you can share their business info on social media as a nice gesture so that your friends that are vegan can genuinely support your friend. Absolutely. David, we talk, we're, you're right on point with what we talked about. Yeah. But what you probably don't have to do, right, is show up every week and get, um, um, what, some planting and, and what, squash, mm -hmm. right? Oh, no. <laughs> Just for the sake of spending money there, which is sometimes what people feel like you have to do. Um, Ooh, so that is a powerful word that you just said. Oh, what did I say, honey? You said half. Mm, I owe do. you nothing. Okay, but I owe you but, nothing. But okay, honey. I owe you okay. nothing, honey. You but, owe me nothing. Okay, imagine the you don't have to show up. Um, I don't have to <laughs> show up. Okay, that's not putting money in your pocket. Okay, and it's not putting money. Imagine in oh, the sorry. person who just tuned in and saw that. They're gonna think something wacky. They're probably gonna report you to the news station right now. Guess what? <laughs> Good publicity. No, but no, in reality, so I wanted us to tackle this. What is support? And then shouldn't support work both ways? Woo! Woo! Listen. Yes, because a lot one, of people always ask you to well, come support, but they never be. But let me around. let me be real Ooh. clear though. Let me be real clear. There are a lot of things that you do in life, and when you do these things out of the kindness of your heart, it is truly because you want to do them out of the kindness of your heart. However, one would like to believe that when the need is on your side and you would like support of some sort, that the person you support it will in return support you, right? So although you took the first act out of the kindness of your heart, hopefully if the system works correctly, um, you will get some level of support too. And Terry said he's so extra. <laughs> Terry don't know that I was on stages uh, oh, for Here, around the world Okay, he, for as years. a performer. As so a performer, entertainer, and everything. Okay. Yes, you know, you probably don't know that. No, but, Terry you know. knows that. But Terry has the bomb logo, by the way. Terry's one of our Girl Getter clients. Alpha Success. Woo, woo. And, dun, dun, dun. Uh, it seems like you should have a theme song. It, it does, it does. But anyway, so I want you guys to give your definition of support. What are some of the ways that you support people? What are some of the, uh, do you feel like support always has to be financial? Or what are you doing to support others? Um, networking is reciprocal, not one dimensional. Completely true. Um, I'm going to touch on that for a second. So this is why it's such a turn off when you meet somebody and the, the benefit is one sided. In fact, what we do is we teach grow getters when you are starting to have a conversation with a strategic partner, start your conversation based on what you are going to do for them. So meaning, remember the courteousness of uh, being a good host, right? If you're a good host and someone comes in your house for the first time and you're serving them, you're not going to fix your plate and your drink first and sit there and eat in front of them. You're going to serve them first. Good morning, Peter Burton. Welcome to Good Morning Success. We're talking about what is support, my friend. But, um, and also, Peter, what's on your agenda today? This is a time for you to put what's on the agenda for today. But, Terry, back to your point. If I'm a hostess, someone comes to my home, and I'm cooking dinner, I'm not going to fix my plate first, and I'm not going to start eating, and then tell them, oh, go make your plate. I'm sorry, I thought you knew, right? I'm not going to do that. Instead, what I'm going to do is serve them first. It works the same way with building a strategic partnership and, and spelling out benefits, right? Even though you know what you want from that person, you have to first start by stating what you can do for them, what's in it for them. So I teach the grow getters always lead with, here's my agenda. I'm here today because I understand that you guys have a 2017 initiative to grow your small business sector. And I understand that you want to grow that by bringing on more nonprofits. As a result, I touch 35 nonprofits a year and I'd like to bring my market and, and position them to work with BNC Bank, right? Or, or a conversation that leads with what I want to do for you. At this point, you have their attention and they're saying, oh yes, keep talking. This is so good. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Now that you have their attention, now that I have your attention, I can turn and say, and in return, what I'm hoping BNC Bank would be willing to do for Grow Getter is to allow us to provide four workshop seminars a year to that same business market. What I'm saying, dear Mrs. or Mr. BNC Bank, is we have the same market. We have the same initiatives. We're going after the same customer this year. So here's what I can do for you, and in return, here's how I'd like you to support me. Right? So always start the conversation with the benefit that you can bring to them. All right. I'm off of that soapbox. Anything else in that area? No, that was real good. That was real good. That was real good? That, that, was, that was outstanding. Awesome. Awesome. I'm pretty sure somebody got something out of that. I feel like people are supporting 
by just simply watching the video. And I appreciate that. And you guys, please share this. But hopefully this. they're getting something out of it because well, I, so. I don't want you to just be watching it. Well, I, even though I know <laughs> well, you you're good looking enough. Me. Of course, yes, yes. of course. So listen, Peter, what is on your agenda today? What are you getting done? I know you're going to show, 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 show and, and do some things. Talk to us about what's on your agenda. Terry, what's on your agenda today, right? Part of being successful is being intentional. That means at this point, at the start of a new day, you already have an idea of your lineup so oh yes so and you must start your day off creating a listing of some sort of what you're going to, or what you want to accomplish that day and actually yesterday we showcased a template I don't know if we need to show it again today but we showcased a template that we actually created and used that keeps us on track with the amount of activities that we're doing so we show when we started it we show if it's still pending at the end of the day and then we show if we completed it and even though you know we work together a two-person team couplepreneurs uh, we still need a level of accountability. Demario has seen me act kind of crazy when I feel like we don't have. A oh, Terry, we were going to do a tagline for your company, but if you, why don't you come up with some and then Great. we'll we'll do it that way. Cause Great, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, we were just talking. We about had you that on our night. agenda to do your Peter tagline. Peter says he has three appointments between now and twelve. PM. Peter, you better see. Peter's not playing. Now let me tell you about Peter. This is what y'all don't know about Peter. Peter is a, a director, unless you're higher than that, Peter. Peter is a director in a company that we are both a part of. Peter is not playing games. He is a massive entrepreneur um, who really, really cares about changing the way that people enjoy their free time, they, the way that they spend their leisure. And Peter is dead set on making sure that everybody he meets knows about this fabulous program and product. And so Peter is not playing games. That's awesome. Welcome. Also, Peter Proctor out of Huntsville, Alabama. Welcome. Good morning to Good Morning Success. That's, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And by the way, yes. for those of you that's tuning in uh -huh. or haven't tuned in before, uh -huh. you might not have heard that you should go take your secret sauce assessment yes. at www.secretsauce.com. <laughs> Dot no, com. it's not. It's what's your secret sauce. What? See? Well, that's I, how I well secret sauce. Dot it's com. what's your secret sauce. Well, <laughs> what's your secret sauce? They get the point. I was okay. trying to throw the. I was trying to do my radio voice. Okay. I'm working on it. Though. That's that's fine, honey. I'm working. Yeah. Go to what's your secret sauce. Dot com. Yesterday we had a record number of people who took their secret sauce. Can we just tell them very quickly why their secret sauce is not about us? It's about them. First of all, it's free. For those of you who heard us say that just now, squinch up your face like, see, I knew it. I knew they were gonna sell something. We're actually not selling anything, right? It's not, we're not selling anything. It's totally free right now to the public. Okay, so go and take your What's Your Secret Sauce uh, dot com assessment. Again, it's What's Your Secret Sauce dot com. Why yeah. should you take the assessment? Can you give them two reasons? I'm gonna give them two reasons as well. Well, two reasons. Um, it will, you will understand your personal brand value. Mm hmm. But why do they need that? Because there are how many people in the world? 7.5 billion. Say it again, babe. You it's 7.5 billion. It's probably 7.6 now. Okay, so there's... Somebody was born last night. There are 7.5 billion people in the world. Yes. You are one of 7.5 billion. If you don't have a way to identify your brand uniqueness, you will be lost in the sauce of mm -hmm. commonality. Yes. On top of it, if you are a business owner, there are 543 thousand businesses that start every single month you will need a distinctive way to separate yourself from the masses you need to show up neon green in a sea of blue people how do you do that by understanding what your secret sauce is what makes you different we talked yesterday about Shark Tank and Mr. Wonderful was getting ready to make a, a decision on investing in this business right it came down to the wire uh, an African-American woman who builds or who has a pretzel dipping business, great business, right? She puts like coconuts and kiwi and all this great stuff um, on her pretzels, right? And, it, and Mr. Wonderful, actually, if you remember the episode, he was the only shark that was kind of creating that tension. Because if you remember, the other sharks were kind of on board. They loved it. They thought it was cool. They thought she was knowledgeable in that space. But Mr. Wonderful sat there with his wonderful self and he said, this sounds like something I heard before. So at this point, the woman says, no, no, we're the only ones that use coconut and this and this and that. And always call us in the middle of these shows. Sorry, guys. So Mr. Wonderful says, well, can't anyone just dip their pretzel in chocolate and make what you have? So she was like, no, no. So all she was saying was no, right? But she wasn't giving a great rebuttal. She said no 
only we're doing it. I've checked. And he said the key word, you guys, get this if you get nothing else. He said, well, I'm struggling. I really need you to convince me what makes you different. Why should I invest with you? Tell me right now in a matter of seconds what makes you stand out? What makes you unique outside of all these other pretzels? Y'all, I was so impressed. I had to stop the, the tape and go and get my camera and record this part, okay? So I do have this recorded. And she stood there like a deer in the headlights. And honey, hit it. What did she say? She said about the kids. And you know, if you really want to hear the full story, I say you watched the one from yesterday. Okay, well, okay, I get where you're going. I See, this is a hint, like we already talked about this, but this is so important. So I'll, I'll wrap it up. My point is that she struggled through. You guys never again guess how to present your best. This is about understanding and making sure the whole world knows their value and their secret sauce when asked. Because sometimes success is about taking advantage of the opportunity. It's about seizing the moment. You will not get a second chance at different times. So you've got to be prepared. You've got to be intentional. And that's what knowing your secret sauce is all about. This woman could not answer it and it cost her. So I digress. Let's move on. Okay. See, wait a minute. What, babe? She asked me for two things. I said one, and then she went off into okay, a whole Okay, okay, okay. I don't go, even want to get the other go, one. Now. Just get the other one. I promise giving, I'm not going to do I'm it. I'm not going to give the Come other on, one. The you just are, took the whole thing. The viewers thing. are begging. Come Didn't on, she just take the whole thing? Yes, and yes. Did anybody, anybody agree with me here? Didn't she ask me for two things? I said one. Peter, that's good, Peter. Okay, come on. What's the other thing? Why? What's the second well, reason? Well, I'm just going to say this right Did here. And I'm, I'm going to let you chime in with me. Sure. Okay. Um, thanks for letting me. What is secret sauce? It's a new age tool for new age thinking. And a new era of relationship building and individual brand marketing. Wow. See, that <laughs> just sums it up right there. But That's why you should go. If you're in front of people, Peter, even you, if you are talking to people, David, if you are talking to people, if you are trying to tell people how amazing you are, sometimes people don't care about the product as much as they care about the experience and who is trying to sell it to them. So what I would recommend is when someone comes to either of you next time and says, well, why should I choose you? Why should I choose this? I've heard of something like this. Why can't I just go and put a safety pin in my collar and do this? And David, you probably already have a list of rebuttals, right? But my point is it really boils down to your secret sauce because people can compete with what you do, but no one can compete with who you are. Say it again. No one can compete with who you are. And as a result, you got to get good at knowing who you are and why you matter. And that's why you should take what's your secret sauce. Now, there are some side effects. Once you take what's your secret sauce and you know it, you will make more money. You will have more opportunities. You will close more deals, right? These are all proven facts. And then Terry says, sometimes to lead the band, you have to turn your back on the crowd. Oh, listen, listen. Yesterday it was you and, and, and um, Jerry. Today, Terry just, Terry, Terry. 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 He just, he just. Terry, I'm, I'm going to take off my he jacket. He just in a channel with me because Terry, he know I'm a band leader. Terry, I'm a band leader. You just did that. Terry, no, honey, you're going to make the kid. Honey, don't turn No, me. I'm turning my back on y'all. No, honey, come on now. People are trying to join in for work purposes. What? All right, that they, was great. This is work purposes. Terry, I'm so proud of who, what you said. Who, who on here wants to be all corporate? Peter Burton said this. Listen, people can compete with what you do, but no one can compete with who you are. Who you are is always more important than what you do. Because even though it's perky collar today, it'll be perky something tomorrow. It can be perky something, right? You're going to create more things, but you are the common denominator, David. Peter, you are the common denominator. When someone says, why choose you? Why go with you? Sometimes if you can't change the product, you change the experience, okay? So my point is know your secret sauce and then own it and then boss your sauce. That's what I want for the entire world. So I'm off of that soapbox. Anyway, this has been Good Morning Success. Today is Thursday. It is a wonderfully thriving Thursday. And um, hopefully you guys have some great things on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Peter says he's really close to marketing director. I'm super excited for you, Peter. I remember when we were at the same rank at the same time and you are just soaring through the ranks. I'm proud of you. And um, I think that's all for today. Do we have any closing words on Good Morning Success as we conclude? Um... Oh, peace, hey, hey, Peter. Peter, we're, okay, yeah. so let's talk about Peter real quick. I don't know how much I'm a, Peter Proctor, by the way. So we're not going to say a lot because we didn't get permission to say a lot, but Peter is doing some great things in Alabama. 
Um, our Grow Getter team is going to be working with Peter's team to grow it. Peter is a mogul. This is Peter Proctor. Peter Proctor is a mogul in the creative art space. They are going to be spearheading and pioneering and, and revolutionizing the creative art space um, in the Huntsville, Alabama area, but not just that area, regionally. So we are excited to come on board with what they're doing. I will you know, be tight-lipped because I don't know how much um, we're allowed to say, but uh, we're going to be coming with them in November to speak on some things. And I'm really excited. So, Peter, thank you for joining us this morning. Terry says, Alphas understand that the mind's direction is more important than his progress. Ooh, that's deep, Terry. So you're deep saying deep. if you keep lifting your head up looking for progress rather than keeping your head straight and focused and undistracted, then you will still stumble and be distracted if you keep looking for results too soon. Just focus, right? Focus on the process and not the results, right, Peter? I mean, Terry, is that what you're saying? So um, gotcha. anyway, do you have any lasting words as we conclude, my love? Um, tune in tomorrow at 8 a.m. Okay. This is going to be deep. What are we? What are we? I am publicly challenging Don Nicole. What? Strategy versus marketing. Oh, honey. Strategy let me, versus let me marketing. Tell you, sweetie, there's no Who win? Who wins? I already. Strategy won. versus marketing. <laughs> All right. Developing your business versus mark versus marketing your business okay honey. who's the top dog who got the stats okay let's go let's challenge go. i just challenged her publicly okay well tomorrow 8 a.m you better tell your friends okay. to be there it's going down tomorrow. i'm going i'm going to lay it on them. terry says it doesn't matter how fast you move if you are going in the wrong direction terry so true these are the types of tips you can get from the Alpha Success brand. Terry is a keynote speaker. Uh, Peter said to be strong, my brother. Uh, Shelton said you guys are her. Shelton, I'm cool. Let me tell you something. This is the wild hair. I am cool, calm, and relaxed. The wild this guy. Didn't she ask me for two statements? I said one, and she talked for 30 minutes. That, no, Hi, that's cool. That's because we're co-anchors, and that's what we you do. You see, she even pushed my chair out the screen. Y'all probably don't see I half of my face. Listen, we love you guys. We hope you guys have a thriving Thursday, a wonderful day. Go to whatsyoursecretsauce.com. Take your secret sauce if... You are looking for a higher purpose. You're looking to make more money. You want to not get passed over for opportunities. You want to stand out amongst the, the loudness of competition. There are so many reasons. Oh, Shelton said, I'm with you, brother. No, you didn't. See, how did you convince Shelton to do that? Shelton's my friend. They see it. Shelton, really? They We've see been it. Facebook friends for like eons. Anyway, um, Peter Burton says, get your mind strong and you will build a big business. That's We talked about that on yesterday. Peter, Just right, right quick, we hit that on yesterday yes. talking about um, the first process of dealing with growth is a strategic mindset. Right. Well, well, no, I can't say that word. Well, no, this is what I was going to say. What makes us different is we don't just build strategy plans. We build a uh, strategic mindsets at the same time. So because a strategic plan is no good without a strategic mindset. Yes. It, yes. <laughs> but on tomorrow, 8 a.m., yes. we're going to see how well that mindset versus marketing is in the marketplace. <laughs> no, Peter Proctor, this one is off the chain. I am my usual sane cool, calm, and collective self. And Demario is the wild hair that is a liability risk that's just wild. No, he almost... she got her hair done yesterday. Can y'all see? She got her uh, hair done. Stop, they can't. And she got on her no. African earrings. These are not African. Yes, they, they was. They, These I... are Caribbean. So, anyways, listen, we love you guys. Terry says, what makes you good is talent and skill. What makes you great is discipline and focus. Terry, save some of your tips, my brother. These are... You're going to give all 52 tips right here. <laughs> Listen, y'all need to hire Terry, alphasuccessonline.com. Terry is um, a keynote speaker, very, very alpha male, mm -hmm. and his business is called alpha, alpha, success. alpha Success. I was still riding off of that because, you know. Oh, why does this keep coming up? I realized, and I'm going to just say this with Terry right quick, and I'm going to leave it alone. Because talent will get you seen and talked about, but skill will get you paid. No, the reality is do you want to be popular or profitable? Ooh, that was deep. You know that was deep. Don't hate on my... Fame or fortune, that's what you mean. Okay, I was going to say. You better give me some love. All right, you guys. We love you. We got to go. Until next time, stay on the grow. If you need any sort of guidance, if you need strategic advisement, hit us up, 704-709-0329, extension 101, or simply go to our website, www.whatsyoursecretsauce.com. That thing about you that can't be bought taught or duplicated your answer is the key to your repeatable success yes and this is the exit theme music <laughs>
Da, 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 da. All right, that's enough. All right, guys. <laughs>